All right, so I think I want to just go ahead and drop in a sampler. I'm going to work with a sound that I picked up on a bike ride the other day. Stopped to buy this uh, along a bike trail. There was this giant set of uh, industrial looking silos and they said air gas on the side and there was this crazy sound as they were venting out some kind of a uh, some kind of gaseous substance it sounded like a crazy uh, vacuum cleaner but anyway I grabbed a really lo-fi sound with my iPhone and just want to see what we can do with that honestly I just like to challenge myself sometimes with what kind of sounds can you get out of some of the most some of the worst, you know, input sources. Um, oh, also, I want to switch my color to dark. It's a lot easier on my eyes, anyway. So let's hear this uh, this air gas <laughs> uh, sound. Not super exciting, uh, but definitely sounded a lot better in person at this spot. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and uh, get a little loop going here. Nice. Obviously, with a sound like this being so droney to begin with, it would be certainly easy to just make some drones out of it. Um, you know, one easy way obviously here with the sampler and adding, I think, uh, some kind of volume envelope, long attack, long release. Let's give ourselves a lot of voices. Very airy, gaseous. Definitely could use some stereoizing. We could obviously we could use a grain delay. Uh, I like also the simple delay, having a bit of difference on one side of time, on one side different than the other. Uh, it kind of widens it up a lot. Not bad for just, you know, basic drone, ambient, melodic type stuff. One effect rack that I created that I is a go-to for me. Yeah, I use... Uh, not this one. Sometimes you get so many effect racks that you make, it's hard to even find certain ones. This one. Yeah, that's kind of a nice, like, tape warble. Gives it that old, almost Boards of Canada type of feel.
Just playing a, a seventh type chord, pretty standard. Uh, the Warp and Flubber is pretty basic, honestly, pretty easy to make. I just use two frequency shifters in tandem, and I have mapped this Warp and Flubber knob to the, uh, the LFO section. And also on one of these, the fine tune. So the more you push up the warp and flubber, the more of the effect you get. Um, this rack knob down at zero, you got the uh, the amount is at zero, and the, the fine tune is at zero. It's subtle, and honestly, if you wanted to tweak it. Uh, you could adjust up the max of each of the LFO amounts on these. You'll probably get something a lot more dramatic. I seriously wish you could automate the min-max for mapped parameters. That would be super amazing. But I guess that's, again, where Max for Live comes in. You just build your own device where you can automate whatever you want. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and record this chord. I also wish this uh, shape, we had a slow random in there. We've got this sample and hold type uh, random, but it's, uh, you know, it's a little blocky little hard-edged for me, but maybe in a future update they'll they'll hear my plea and add in such a, a you know more LFO options. Okay. Just back down this uh, this shape here. Obviously, 13 is way too much. I think we had it at like four point something. I'm uh, more interested in a subtle effect there. And I think if we add this warp and flubber before the delay, it's an even more stereo type feel. And one crazy thing we could do is we could do a stereo split here. Let's call this left. Right, and for that we need two of these on each side. Left, balance, left, and left, balance, left. We'll go ahead and get rid of this one. Let's see, right, right. Right, so with this technique, you can essentially add in whatever effects you want and process the left and right channels independently of each other and get some pretty bizarre effects, but on the subtle side for stereoizing, it's it's nice to, uh, you know, put like a chorus on one side, a chorus on another, and change the parameters subtly of each so they're not exactly the same, or... Here, flubber amount knob, and maybe even change it a little bit here, just so that it's going to be slightly different no matter at what stage. There we go. And we could even try something like. rack. Again, I've set my default to be this on-off rack here. Let's see what it sounds like without our delay with this kind of Haas style 
separation here. Almost like a phasery kind of. Huh. Interesting. Well, could be useful for some context. Sometimes like to just try something a little different. 4-4 four, four is too obvious to me, I think. effect you know of all the Ableton effects obviously all are really useful in, in certain contexts but you know the glue compressor is one I find myself using a whole whole bunch as well as the EQ8 fairly transparent the glue one obviously adds a little bit of uh, color but I like that it's it's smooth Cytomic make great effects they don't have too many out but the ones that they have out they sound really good their filter effect Interesting. Well, not bad. Kind of interesting, I like that. I don't like the clickiness that comes off the green delays wet and dry. Uh, it's, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my uh, on off just because with the, the green delay, when you turn it on really quickly, I've noticed you get like a, you get some artifacts from there. It's almost like it has to initialize, but if it's always on, this one this time. Modulation. Go ahead and set this to the grid. I guess since we're doing more beat oriented stuff today. We will grid up a little bit. could add a bit of movement to the filter. Honestly, the more movement, the better, in my opinion. I might think a little more differently about this than, than a lot of people, but I, I just kind of feel that it 
that the more movement and motion you have across a song, the more nuance and variety, the more interesting it is on multiple listens. So with my own music, I'm always trying to push myself to see how much of that I can get without crossing the line of it just being kind of obnoxious or too overboard. It takes a lot of practice, obviously, like every anything. Nothing good usually happens overnight. see what else we can get going on in there. This kick, it's almost inaudible, but it does provide a nice pumping, side chain pumping. I'm curious what will happen if we add a little bit of noise, white noise. Let's see, wrong, wrong uh, waveform. like some of these new filter options Ableton has added like that squealing sound is just has some really nice character if we wanted to do some kind of minimal it's almost too fast for my taste Of course, being an ambient track, more reverb, always. It's easy to go overboard with reverb, but I, I love it. It just, it's transporting. It can create a sense of, of space, obviously, that can make the listener feel like they're somewhere else. Some have told me I use too much reverb. Sometimes I honestly disagree. I kind of feel like of all the effects, reverb is, is one of the, I almost consider it an instrument in a way. Really all these effects can be an instrument if you use them in the right context. this ongoing filter sound here I think I want to I want to switch it up a little bit let's go ahead and also need is a little bit of a, a velocity probably even a random velocity a little bit and I think this interesting could uh, be used for like a cheap build cliche but whatever sometimes that sounds good sometimes it sounds good to be sounding a bit nostalgic -y. one thing I would probably not do in this track if I was really tracking it out would be to you know have the kick drop out I might just make the whole song one continuous seven to eight minute piece with a lot of variation change along the way but just not have the kick pulled out like that's such a cliche move with dance is to just like pull out the bass and then drop it back in you just hear that so much and it probably is a great technique for techno and house and 
trance or whatever EDM, but in my book, it's so overused. There's probably some way to do it with a song like this and have it be maybe, you know, fade the kick out and fade it back in, and make it a lot more subtle, a lot more tasteful, if you will. This is one of those cases where I want to also automate, get a little modulation automation in tandem thing going on. Let's copy our endpoint here. Overall, I mean, if you can sit with a, a sketch you're doing for a couple hours, then, you know, that might be a good sign that it's actually decent, halfway decent. The real test is if you can come back, you know, the next day or a week after not having heard it and, you know, listening to a lot of inspiring and good stuff along the way and then decide then after a week of not having heard it if it's any good anymore that's sort of the telltale for me sometimes when working on an album I'll have a bunch of sketches and I'll literally not listen to them for weeks sometimes months and then I'll go back and then it'll be a lot clearer which ones need more work or need to be thrown out for that matter or completely remixed which ones are good to go. Most of the time, there's always a lot of work to do after that dormancy period and reevaluationing, we re evaluating them. in the uh, early 2000s, I think a piece like this would have been really nice to hear. You hear this kind of ambient techno a lot more nowadays, I feel like. something to the kick. I'm thinking maybe a secondary layer. We could do that so many different ways. We could obviously... Oh, I think I need to stretch this one out a little bit. Love this new handle feature in Ableton 10. Here we go. Give it a bit more of a oh, steady flow. Yeah, the kick is almost so low. I'm curious what frequency we're getting on that. Oops, wrong. Effect. It's looking like 32. Yeah, that's that's asking a lot of most speakers. Most monitors are, you know, you, decent monitors like Rocket 8s or Mackie HR824s. You would uh, would probably be able to hear some of that but honestly I think what we should do and I'm not sure what this will sound like actually let's add a it's gonna duplicate these notes an octave up in here but I think I want to be a little bit more tricky about it cool yeah I can hear that kick coming through a little bit more I think if we wanted to, we could add a snap. We might need a different, uh, let's see, a different one of these. A different 
FM configuration that even maybe. Oh yeah. Yeah. So maybe every other measure on that one. the course obviously that also I was ha having an idea in my head of what it would sound like if we automated this transpose modulate it actually. When to modulate versus automate. Well that's definitely a personal choice. You know if you really want to get fast results you can use you know this feature here record clip automation and just start moving knobs around. That's fun if you're I, I like using modulations honestly because once the clips end up over here you can cut up and move things around and you don't lose automations quite as quickly. I do wish Ableton opened it up so that you could edit the modulation curves like right on the timeline instead of having to drill down into the clip view maybe one day I'm not really hearing a ton of uh, difference there but maybe this. I also wish Ableton had a little indicator next to each thing, like a little blue dot or something just letting you know there's some modulation going on there, but you, you don't actually know until you get into the clip and look into the uh, envelope drill down. I do love these two buttons though, I gotta say that is a, a real huge help in Ableton 10 over Ableton 9. Try something new. I want to play with this air gas sound a little bit more. Let's just drop it into an audio track. Wow, quite a difference between this and what we have going on now. when you're sketching you just do random things and then you hear something and and it sparks an idea I guess the, the, the goal is to get to the point where you can make those little sparks of ideas that pop up easily executable you know that's a fun challenge it's not always easy especially in the beginning when you don't know what you know does what you kind of just have to sort of play with things and, and be comfortable or okay with just being inspired by the sort of surprises you get from fumbling about and stumbling upon ideas that way.
thing we could try is adding a MIDI note probability gate rack. This uh, basically says for any note coming in, depending on what this percentage is, the higher the percentage, less notes. And if we want just one specific note to basically always come through, then I think we would automate or modulate down that knob so that specific notes So cheesy. <laughs> so atypical, like 90s ambient. But hey, maybe that's all coming back in style and. from here. Obviously there's a million ways we could go from here. I want to try an idea out that I was stewing over uh, the other day. I'm not sure if anything good is going to come of this idea, but we are going to find out. that a bit. Sometimes in the middle of sketches I like to just turn parts off and try to focus on some new directions. Almost has a percussive wish this rate went up to five milliseconds or three. It's definitely something Max for Life can easily do, but I think what I want to do here is try to set this arpeggiator up so that it basically shuts off the outgoing notes. Let's make another group in there. An easy way to do this is duplicate that effect, group it, remove that effect, and we have this, this chain switch here. Yeah, let's see here if this will work. I want it basically when this rate is at one second, this to mute. Ah, I see what's going on here. It's basically this speaker node button is set to turn off at minus anything below 50 or halfway, so in this case 63 and below. So I think what we need to do is set a 
velocity be set it to 64. I guess I could just type that in there, 63. set the mapping here 64 and 0 it says voila I'm glad that worked out. I was kind of thinking I'm going to be sitting here for the next 10 minutes trying to solve this. All right, we'll call this gate. Go ahead and mute that. We'll call this, well, don't need to call that anything. Uh, let's see, note, uh, note our pitcher. And I think what I want to try is splitting this up. Luckily, we've got this key filter here. Looks like C4 is what's coming through there. Cool, so only the note C4 is gonna get this effect. And I think I wanna... I dig it. That's a classic move right there with that uh, kind of slingshot or bouncy ball type of uh, effect. Okay, maybe I recant what I was saying earlier. Sometimes too much reverb is too much. I will admit the uh, the reverb that comes with Ableton, not my favorite. I use it in these examples. I'm very familiar with it, and I use it because obviously when you download these projects later, you know, you, you don't have to worry about, you know, plug in not found messages showing up, which will happen down the road, I think. I'm gonna start at some point using a lot of the VSTs that I really love. Okay, so I think the idea that I was having, we'll call this C4. I wanted to have multiples of these going on. So when we play this note here, we can do different things with it. So let's try to map. Gosh, I wish we had more than eight macro. I'm really excited about uh, Ableton 11 having 16, I think, up to 16 macro knobs. That'll be huge, plus a randomizer uh, in racks. Where am I going here? Okay. Let's see, four. Oh, wrong one. Unmap. It's easy to get turned around. All right, okay, some possibilities unfolding. Let's try a third one. And I think my idea ultimately is to get different sounds from each. So what we would do is probably uh, group this, move this MIDI effect inside of here. So at that point we could have different different samplers for each one of these and spread it out that way. So let's try that. Is it not going to let me pull it in there? That's a 
bummer because this is a MIDI effect rack. So what I need to do is, ah, I should have set this up much differently. Well, I think I think it's not a, a not a difficult solution. Here we can just basically have also these samplers split onto different keys. I think for the sake of time, I'll just do three of them. And let's make sure we got this one set up correctly. Map you to here. And let's make sure they all work. Obviously I'm not hearing anything on this one because I don't have a note here. Gosh, I just love building stuff like this. It's amazing what you can do with just the built-in MIDI effects in tandem. You can build some really heinous, crazy contraptions. Uh, there's one that I was messing with a while back. These uh, kind of a note delay, almost like a humanizer. I'm curious what that'll sound like here. It's a hefty beast with a lot of internal working parts. Lots of stuff. You can uh, drill down and check it out at some point. Not really the uh, the sound I'm going for. Cool. So let us get back to sound designing here. I want to play with filters on this one. That air gas sound had so much high end in it. Obviously, we've just turned it into some kind of a generic sounding hi-hat. And then let's see here. Not that that's what we want. I think we could set up a lot more modulations too, like, uh, a little pitch. I'm curious also if we really push the pitch on this one. like a super spacey sort of modular kind of texture. Chirpy, very chirpy. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and modulate this one. Let's give it a real long lifespan. off for a little while and then maybe also definitely maybe you want to link the velocity somehow in there not sure what that's going to do but we'll find out in a little bit I see all right let's try 
just have any sound being bouncy ball this way. And I think one thing I've noticed is that when these notes get to the end, you hear a bit of a reset. So I think what I need to do is set the length of this kind of, ah, whoops, not there. Set the length here to something crazy like, yeah, and just put them all to the end there. Bouncy. Okay. Troop. What kind of a tonal sounding? And we can also set these knobs to make the pitch go up a little bit as we... I love to have it so that when you start it at 127, as you pull down, you kind of get like a random range each time it changes. Every time this hits 127, so when you pull down it goes to a random point and the pitch may be variating between plus and minus seven notes. That was different every time. Obviously a max for live task right there. We'll save that for a rainy day, that idea. It's a fun idea though. I think I might try to play with that some sometime. I keep a little notebook of all these little random ideas that I have, things I want to play. It's probably hundreds and hundreds, thousands at this point that'll probably never get never get uh Executed, but it's just good to have ideas for you know when you're stuck on that desert island and you've just got your laptop and Max for Live and you can just spend the rest of your days experimenting. And I think I, I I want to save this one now. We'll call this Bouncy Baller. Just go ahead and save that as a preset for later use. I think I want to expound on that one at some other time. I think I'm not too, you know, jazzed about any of the sounds coming through. I like the overall idea of the effect though. But again, when you're just trying to work with one sound and uh, make, you know, interesting sounds come out of just like one source sample, like what we're doing here with this air gas, um, obviously it's uh, a little tricky. But, you know, if you EQ down um, You can kind of, especially a sound like, you know, the air gas one we're using today. You can kind of get uh, just about any sound to come out of it with EQ shaping and like, for example, I'll mute this kick. I'm going to go ahead and Yeah, let's mute this one. It's kind of been going on and on forever. Something that I find is, is good to learn to uh, get good at is sort of recognizing when something has worn itself out.
bit of creatures there, but obviously needs more tweaking. So let's get our air gas sound. I want to try to make a kick type sound out of it. I believe it was Monolake. I could be wrong, but Monolake who made an entire album out of just, maybe it was Matmos, made an entire album out of just one white noise burst. Because with that white noise burst, you have all the frequencies to work with. And so with volume shaping and You can isolate different frequencies, like there's some interesting frequencies going on in here. It looks like principal note being, I guess, looping, that helps. Looks like our principal frequency is F, key of F. And uh, the EQ8 is really nice because you can you can do a lot of automation and, and uh, get some pretty cool, pretty decent sounds without zippery digital noises. Okay, EQ. This is something that I like to do a lot: is is shaping with the EQ. Strangely enough, there's a kick. Albeit not a super exciting sounding one, but you know, with enough tweaking and shaping, add some saturation in there. So it's a nice sort of minimal-esque motif happening right now. You can get some really nice like pipe type sounds with the chorus with this uh, rate set to multiply by 20 or whatever. the side chain from our new air gas kick. We'll call this air gas kick. That way we can find it easily in our drop down here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and just put this
Sounds like some of that tone is still coming through. Uh, a lot more experimental. Some fun dubby stuff. Obviously with, uh, you know, EQ shaping a kick like this, you know, you don't, you don't get as much of the randomness options as you do with the MIDI notes and some of the, the cool MIDI effects. Um, but you could, you know, take this envelope and duplicate it out a bunch of times and just sort of modulate it, play with some of the, uh, some of the envelopes that way. There's, I'm sure there's a way to use Max for Live to generate envelopes like this and then record them. So we could group this and we could just pull out this frequency here. Obnoxious. Definitely need to turn that one down. nuts with the grain delay and add two of them with the pitches differently. We could also automate these pitches. So really with using these chains here, you can take one sample going through and I mean we could have as many chains as we want and each one is like doing slightly different things. This kick is sounding of course very repetitive. Adding a delay oftentimes pushes the rhythm off a bit, so that's a fun technique. A lot more experimental at this point. A lot more minimal. That's usually where my sketches end up going. I can't, you know, enjoy myself too much if the sounds are just too repetitive. Almost out of time. I'm trying to keep these down to an hour. Some days maybe less, some days maybe more. It's just so much fun to do this. 
and gives me a little practice just talking while I'm doing this kind of thing, which I've never really done before. Sounds a bit atypical to some, you know, not super interesting texture there, but something you could get out of like a modular. Really wish this auto filter had a rate that would go up much higher. And we could obviously automate Interesting. Did not expect that to come out of the flanger. So yeah, I mean, we just keep tweaking at this. Maybe something uh, interesting could come out of it. Yeah, it just goes to show how much you can do with one silly little sample. Um, you can, using EQing and shaping and saturations, you can pull just about any kind of sounds out of it that you want. I kind of like that, it's got a nice, crispiness, a nice twinkly.
And I feel like with this one, this kick, we almost don't need the bass anymore. Because we have this secondary one that we made. Anyway, this was a fun little excursion. I always love the challenge of trying to take one little silly sound and seeing all the different kinds of textures and oddity, odd things I can pull out of it. Today we got pads, we got kick drums, we got weird tones, we got some sweet chirpy... Honestly, this is my favorite sound of the day. Loving that right there. And I think what I would want to do is export it at 192 um, and just see what it would sound like because I've noticed with Ableton effects you actually get especially with some of the the filtering and in uh, the grain delay and some of the uh, the distortions the saturation and overdrive you actually get a more finer crisper sound sometimes sometimes it's not always better just depends on the configuration of of uh, like I haven't noticed too much of a, a more refined sound with the EQ8 uh, with 192. Um, and oftentimes I like to export at 192, drag that sample back in and pitch it down a few octaves because sometimes you get sounds, you export at 192, you'll get sounds that are above the range of hearing in there because 192, uh, even 96 can have a lot of frequencies in there that you can't hear so if you pitch that down several octaves, you can actually start to hear weird little chirps and tweaky noises that can be fun textures sometimes to play with. Anyway, food for thought. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, I'll go ahead and let this just play out for a little bit. And we'll call it a day. Until next time. <laughs>